Okay, Justice Scarpio, I wonder if you monitored in um, the president's speech at the Shangri-La Dialogue, there was a mention of uh, the Paris Treaty. I understand from Ronald here, it was the first time that the Philippine president has ever mentioned the Paris Treaty in the context of uh, our claims in the West Philippine Sea. Uh, Justice, can you tell us what the significance of this is? What well, utility uh, does it have you know, in our claims? That's very significant. It's uh, one of the most significant events uh, that really happened lately. Because uh, if you look at the, uh, our history, uh, if you look at the Field Journal, the Philippine uh, uh, Journal, uh, the Journal of the Philippine Judicial Academy, there's an article there by former Solicitor General Estelito Mendoza. And he said that uh, the Philippines never owned, never had sovereignty over the KIG, over the Spratlys until 1978, when the President Marcos issued PD 5096, uh, creating the Kalayan Island Group. So he said, uh, the, our territory is limited to the islands within the Treaty of Paris Lines. Mm -hmm. That was the, what uh, Estelito Mendoza said, that we, uh, we never owned through the centuries the Spratlys. Mm -hmm. It was only in 1979, 78 that we claimed it under PD 5096. 78 is rather late, where you know you're a Johnny come lately if you base your claim starting 1978. Mm -hmm. So that's Stelito Mendoza. And then you have uh, uh, Father Bernas, the dean of the Tenure mm -hmm. Law School, who said that Philippine territory is limited to the islands within the treaty lines. If we have to claim the Spratlys, we must use other principles of international law not treaty law. It cannot be based on a treaty because the Treaty of Paris limited the, the territory ceded by Spain to the U.S. to the islands within the treaty lines. And Scarborough Shoal and the Spratlys are outside the treaty lines. Right. And you have, if you go to YouTube now, you'll see uh, 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 Senator Enrile saying, wag na tayo, wag na natin pag-usapan niyang Scarborough. Hindi sa atin yan, squatter lang tayo dyan. That's outside the Treaty of Paris lines. That's not our territory. So uh, all of these narratives by these uh, legal luminaries uh, uh, convince China mm -hmm. that Scarborough Shoal and the Spratlys are outside mm -hmm. Philippine territory. And that's why when, when Foreign Minister Wang Yi in 2016, uh, February 2016, before the arbitral award was issued, he spoke at the CSIS, that's the leading think tank in Washington, before diplomats from all over the world. He showed there the Treaty of Paris Lines, showing the islands within the Paris of Treaty Lines and showing Scarborough Shoal and the Spratlys outside. Mm -hmm. He said, see, this is the 118 degrees longitude of the Treaty of Paris. All islands to the west, West Philippine Sea, mm -hmm. do not belong to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. All islands to the west of this 118 degrees longitude line of the Treaty of Paris. And so there's, the Philippines has no basis at all in claiming. And in fact, uh, the Chinese are quoting uh, Stelito Mendoza. So this has created uh, you know, some other writers uh, in uh, Western journals, uh, and really it pains me to read the, them and say that we are a late claimant. We only base it in 1978. And if we base it in 1978, we're too late the hero too late to the party because uh, China claimed it in 1947 in their China handbook of 1947. So, uh, but th these are all wrong. Okay. This uh, narrative, if, if, uh, if as, I may... as uh, stated by Stelito Mendoza, Dean Bernas, or Bernas and this, Enrile. Uh, Senator Enrile, are factually, legally, historically false. Okay. Why? Um, so, Justice, then it begs the question, why was it included? Why was it mentioned in the speech by the president? Because when the the after signing the Treaty of Paris, so the Americans came here, and uh, the Spanish garrisons in uh, Cagayan de Sulu, Cebuto, Mapun Island, refused to vacate. They said, if you look at the Treaty of Paris lines, we are outside the Treaty of Paris lines because there was a mistake. In the Treaty of Paris, there were fixed coordinates, uh, longitude, latitude of all the lines. So they drew the lines 
And there were certain islands like in Cagayan de Sulu and Cebuto outside the line. So the Spanish garrison there refused to move. So they said, we are outside the treaty lines. So the Americans went back to the Spaniards, said, look, uh, our intention was the entire Philippine archipelago should be ceded to the U.S. So let's clarify, sign a treaty again to clarify. Washington. The mm. Spaniards refused. Mm. The Americans, after a long, acrimonious exchange of notes verbal, mm -hmm. so, uh, they finally mm. the Americans said, okay, let's, to cut this short, we will pay you an additional 50,000 U.S. dollars okay. on top of the $20 million that we paid to for move the, the islands line. within the <laughs> treaty lines. To move the line. The yes. Spaniards yes. said, uh, that's too little. Mm. So... The Americans doubled it to 100,000, and the Spaniards said, agree, we will sign. Okay. So the second treaty was signed two years later, 1898, Treaty of Paris, 19 1900, Treaty of Washington. Yeah. There's only one article in the Treaty of Washington. Spain also cedes to the U.S. Any and all islands, islands outside. belonging to the Philippine archipelago lying outside the lines of the Treaty of Paris. So it included all islands of the Philippine archipelago outside the lines. So the question is, what are the islands of the Philippine yes. archipelago outside the lines? Where is that document? Where is that map? We go to three maps, 1734 Murillo Velarde mm -hmm. map, because it yes. says that Panacot, that's Scarborough. It says that Los Baos de Paragua, that's those are the Spanish. The second is, and that's an official map of Philippine territory as of 1734. Yes. Mm. Because of the, mm. uh, uh, you see there in the cartouche on the upper right side, right hand side, the. Justice, town. that's the map behind you, Diba. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's the map behind you. Yeah. You will yeah. see there here the cartouche, yeah. that's the Royal Crown of Spain, that means it's an official yes. map. Okay. That's the map behind them. That's the, the map. The Bilardi map. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the so, yes. Bilardi yeah. map. The oh, second yeah. map is the 1808. The 1808 mm. all is also an official Spanish, the second official Spanish map of Philippine territory during the Spanish regime. And it's more precise now because Scarborough mm. Shoal is there with deaf soundings because uh, Alessandro Malaspina came here to Manila in 1792 and went straight to Scarborough to conduct a deaf sounding. Yes. We measure the depth of all mm. the rocks so to guide navigators. And that's why there mm. is that uh, in 1808 map, you see the uh, depth soundings there, the survey of Malaspina. And then the mm. last map uh, of Philippine territory during the Spanish regime, the uh, 1875 Carta General del Archipelago Filipino. And when the Americans came here, they did not have a map of the Philippines. They adopted in total the 1875 Carta General of the Spaniards because it was the most complete map. You can see Scarborough shoulder, and you can see the entire Spratlys. You can see Pag Tito. Tito Island is there. Tito Island is yes. You can see Ituaba. Ituaba is there. Everything, and with deaf soundings. So, with the, with mm. depth measurements of the yeah. depth around the islands to guide navigators. So this is really the complete map of Philippine territory. When you ask the question, what are the islands of the Philippine archipelago outside the lines of the Treaty of Paris? This is the map. Mm -hmm. okay. so, and in the, in the Islas Palmas case, that's the famous case uh, between the Netherlands and the U.S. over the island of Palmas off the coast of uh, Mindanao uh, in the Philippine Sea, because the the Spaniards discovered the island and put it in the in the 1875 map, but the Spaniards never returned to the island. It was the Dutch East India Company that went there and signed a treaty with the locals. There were about five, 700 people living there. So the Datu, the local chieftain, pledged allegiance to to the Netherlands, and so two countries claim now the Islas Palmas, and they submitted it to arbitration by. Max Huber, a very famous case. Huh? This is a very famous international law case. And Max Huber said, discovery alone is not sufficient. You have to, ex you have to uh, uh, continuously display peaceful sovereignty over the territory yeah. to complete your mm -hmm. title. And it was a Dutch that did that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Max Huber awarded Islas Palmas to the Dutch, and it's now part of Indonesia. Yeah. But so in that case, the Americans, to prove that Islas Palmas is part of the Philippines, submitted the 1875 map 
1875 map and in their memorandum submitted to uh, the judge to Max Huber, they said this 1875 map is an official map of Philippine territory during the Spanish regime and now during the American regime. So there you are. That's why this map is very important because the Americans mm. and, the, and the Spaniards said this is the map of Philippine territory. Hmm. That was the subject hmm. of the Treaty of Washington. Okay. In the Treaty of Washington, there's hmm. a phrase there, and this session of these islands outside the treaty lines retroact in session, in ownership, up to the date of the Treaty of Paris. So when you look at the Treaty of Paris, you have to think that there are islands outside also. Hmm. Because hmm. the Treaty of Washington said that this session in 1900 of the islands outside the treaty lines are deemed incorporated into the Treaty of Paris. Yeah. Okay, right. So that's why, uh, but of course, that's not, that's not the narrative that our yes. legal luminaries have been saying all along. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the Chinese have, have, Use uh, that. have used followed that. our legal luminaries that yeah. <laughs> the Philippine territory is limited to the islands within the treaty lines. That's why when President Marcos Jr., for the first time in Philippine mm -hmm. history, said that the Philippine territory is regulated by the Treaty of Paris as, as that was amplified, clarified, and amended by the Treaty of Washington. Washington. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. na, for the first yeah. time, yeah. this clarifies to the whole world. And that is factually, legally, and historically correct. That yes. is our narrative. That yeah. is the correct story of the Philippines. So, so uh, Justice, you would say that that very important detail uh, was probably the biggest thing that to come out of the president's speech in in, in Shangri-La Dial. Yes, in, in relation, my view, in relation that Justice was the Atanong watershed Patrick, moment uh, where he clarified yeah. Philippine territory that's directly directed at China. Yeah. So Should justice, we still in relation to justice? justice? In relation the to funny thing Patrick, is this. Uh, the president, in the arbitration at The Hague, yeah. China said, we are not participating, but this is our position. Philippine territory is regulated by three treaties, mm. as stated mm. in the uh, 1935 Philippine Constitution. Treaty of Paris, Treaty of Washington, and the treaty with the British demarcating yes. our boundary in southern Philippines, between southern Philippines and British North Borneo. They mentioned the Treaty of Washington. Mm -hmm. So they're bound by the Treaty of Washington. They said Philippine territory is also regulated by the Treaty of Washington, but they did not read the text of the Treaty of Washington. <laughs> so they said treaty, Philippine territory is regulated by three treaties, Treaty of Paris, Treaty of Washington, and Treaty with the British, and all these islands are, must, can only be found within the treaty lines. Yeah. They misread or did not read. They were misled by our legal luminaries. Mm. And that position paper under the law, that is a judicial admission, the highest form of admission. So they admit that our territory is regulated also by the Treaty of Washington, and that, that, uh, that binds them. So, Justice, in relation to Tanong ni Patrick, the President, in his uh, keynote speech at Shangri-La Forum, listened more to your framework than to the framework of his uh, chief legal advisor, Secretary Enrile. No? Well, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> You're putting the justice on a spot. But our problem is, even our own historians forgot mm. about the Treaty of Washington. Mm. And if you look at the internet, if you go to the internet, you see the Philippine territory in the Treaty of Paris lines. Mm. And that has been the impression of everybody. So, mali talaga. Hmm. And it, is, it has misled China. Okay, Justice, sorry for, for, uh, for a stupid question. <laughs> but <laughs> bottom line, okay, bottom line, uh, Justice, the Treaty of Paris actually gives us more territory, more claim uh, over what, Scarborough and Spratlys? Or uh, the, Washington, uh, the Washington. The Washington. The Treaty yeah. of Washington. Treaty of Washington. Washington. For purposes of the West Philippine Sea dispute, yes. what is important is the Treaty of Washington. Right. Which is, in a way, so, you could call an, an, an amendment to the Treaty of Paris. Something yes. Something like that. Two years later, a like correction, that. But a in revision. that amendment, they said all these islands are deemed 
ceded to the U.S. as of the date of the Treaty of Paris. Okay. Uh, so when you look at the map, you must have a box there for Scarborough right. Shoal and for the Spratlys. And the, that's what I told the, the Namria, because the Namria circulated a proposed new map of the Philippines, mm -hmm. and hmm. the treaty lines are still there, and they did not indicate there the Treaty of Paris. They listed all the treaties except the Treaty of Washington. <laughs> so the most important mm. treaty now, because that's what's in dispute, is the Treaty of Washington. But in their listing in the legend of the map, they missed out the Treaty of Washington. So I told them, please mm. include the Treaty of Washington, because without the Treaty of Washington, how do we prove that we have sovereignty over Scarborough Shoal and uh, the Spratlys? The uh, KIG. Uh, just as a, so just should this we be treaty. amplifying this more? Uh, for yes. example, the DFA, the missions of the Philippines all over the world, should they be amplifying this detail? Na yes. Ngayon lang na highlight? Yeah, that's why this is very important. This speech of the president mm -hmm. saying that Philippine territory is determined, laid down in the Treaty of Paris as amplified, as amended by the Treaty of Washington. Mm. That should be the marching order now. This is the first time there is such mm. a declaration by the president. Yes. The president is the chief architect of foreign policy. This involves foreign policy now. So all our mm. embassies, consulates should echo this now. This should be our narrative. Mm. Okay. It's, it's like throwing a monkey wrench on the whole <laughs> yeah, yeah. West see discussion yeah. now, no? Uh, so, um, I, I guess this bit of news delights you, uh, former Justice, uh, Justice Tarpio. Yeah, music it's, to it's my ears. News. It is. It, <laughs> but I, I wonder, Justice, whether a treaty between two countries, no, uh, the United States and Spain, uh, can, can it hold uh, other countries, like China, for example? Yes, because uh, there is this principle in international mm -hmm. law, UT possidetis juris, as you possess under the law, stay there. If you look at the map of Africa and uh, South America, you will see that the boundaries are drawn in straight lines right. of these countries. And one tribe may straddle both sides of the boundary. Now, if you allow them to fight to redraw their boundary, there will be perpetual boundary wars. So the international law developed this doctrine that those boundaries established by the colonial powers for their colonies as they became independent are sacrosanct. They must be respected by all states. That applies to all states. So the colonial powers established our boundary. The Treaty of uh, Paris was established by two colonial powers, Spain and the U.S. The Treaty of Washington by Spain and the U.S., two colonial powers, and the Treaty with the British by two colonial powers, U.K. and uh, the U.S. So this is covered by the UT Positivist Juris Principle. All states are bound because the policy of international law is to preserve peace and stability. The boundary wars are the most dangerous wars because that's perpetual. So they said nobody will will ask for, uh, unless both sides agree, you cannot change your boundary. That's the UT Juris principle. And Malaysia is bound because Malaysia just inherited Sabah, North Borneo, from the British. Uh, the U.S. is bound because it was a party to the treaty. And China is bound because China submitted this judicial admission to the uh, Hague uh, Arbitral Tribunal. China submitted an official document saying that Philippine territory is governed also by the Treaty of Washington. It's bound. That's the highest form of admission. A judicial admission is the highest form of admission under the law. So China is bound, Malaysia is bound, the U.S. is bound, Spain is bound, U.K. is bound. Okay. Justice, can China withdraw that? That submission. No, you go to the Chinese embassy website here. Yes. The Philippines. You will see the same statement. Philippine territory is governed by three treaties. They cite our yes. 1935 uh, constitution. It says that three treaties. You go to the Chinese uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs website, the same. They also state there. Philippine territory is governed by the three treaties. So they did, they, they in fact reinforce our claim without knowing it.
because they did not read anymore the text of the treaty <laughs> because they relied on our legal luminaries. They relied on Stelito Mendoza, the uh, Father Bernas, and Enrile. So they said, oh, they, these are the legal luminaries of the Philippines. Their territory is limited to the treaty lines. Scarborough Shoal and the Spatlis are outside. We're done. 